As we continue to go back in time here at Calvary Baptist Church, uh, Brother Daryl Hayes, he uh, came here as the pastor in the late 70s, and he left here in the early 80s. And uh, Brother Daryl Hayes is going to come. He doesn't need an introduction. Some of you have had him in your churches. And uh, he's going to come and share what God has from his word. Thank you, preacher. And thank you, Brother Tim. Thank you, Brother Rose. I tell you, I appreciate these men. I appreciate the work they did here at Calvary. And, of course, the, the uh, blessing I had from being here for four and a half years. I want you to go ahead and turn them over to John chapter 10, if you will, please. John chapter 10 for our scripture reading this morning. John chapter 10. Just one verse of scripture. You, of course, probably could probably quote it by heart, but uh, John chapter 10. Look at verse 10, if you will. <clears throat> for the Lord said, The thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Most of you know I have three birth children and uh, then we adopted two kids and we have a boy that we raised as a foster boy. So we raised six children and through the years we've added to our family we have 19 grandkids. We have I think 10 or 11 great-grandkids, but uh, anyway, pretty good-sized family. But, but many years ago, I decided that uh, the first Saturday in December, before Christmas, that we would have uh, a gathering of our family so I could make sure that every boy and girl, every man and woman knew why Jesus came to this earth. That is more than gifts and receiving and and all the other things. I, I wanted them to understand that amidst all that fanfare that, that the reason Christ came was to was to die on Calvary and of course uh, uh, to give us life. So we, we began in the many, many years ago, on the first Saturday in December, we began with a, a happy birthday Jesus party. And uh, through the years, of course, the crowd got bigger and bigger. We'd have 30, 40, and then 50. And we made it a two-day event. We'd do it on Friday and Saturday. And uh, I won't go through all that we did, but uh, we'd have a Happy Birthday Jesus cake. And we would sing Happy Birthday to Jesus. We had scavenger hunts. We had uh, uh, the Christmas story. We had the younger children to dress the part. And, and uh, they would played out the part of Mary and Joseph and and so forth. And then, of course, we had, uh, we put a uh, quilt up between the den and the kitchen and and uh, we'd have uh, the little ones under 10 years of age to go fishing. And we'd have some on the other side to hook a, a gift and and we had 10 gifts for each child. And and uh, anyway, just a big deal, I mean, a big deal. And, and you, then on Friday night, I'd say to them, now look, uh, it's getting to be about bedtime. It's about midnight or 1 o'clock. I said, now the boys, you go in this room, and we're going to make tents or lean-tos, and the girls, you go in this room, and we'll make tents and lean-tos. And, and uh, now you can stay up all night if you want to, as long as you don't keep somebody else awake who wants to sleep. If they want to sleep, you let them sleep. And now you can stay awake all night. And so we gave them flashlights, and they'd giggle and carry on, and and uh, made a big deal out of it. And then the next morning, we'd all get up together and uh, cook a great big breakfast, and we'd eat the, eat the breakfast. And then usually about noon, 1 o'clock, somewhere in that region, then folk would go home. And I tell folk often, I said, you know, I thoroughly enjoyed Christmas. I enjoyed the decorations. I enjoyed the lights. I enjoyed... All of it. I just I enjoy the family get together and all the other. But I said to me, the most beautiful lights of all, the most beautiful lights of all, was those tail lights on Saturday. <laughs> As I saw them leaving my driveway, to go home. <laughs> beautiful lights. Now, of course, I'm teasing. I love my family, and 
But if I wanted them to know why Jesus uh, came, that it was more than getting gifts and, and so forth and so on. So we talked about uh, that he came to die for mankind. We also said to them that the book of Luke says that, that, he, that he declares, I came to seek and to save that which was lost. And boy, am I glad of that. I'm a part of that. Amen. So he came to seek and to save that which was lost. But, but not only to save us, but, but, but he wants us to, to, according to this verse I just read you, to enjoy abundant life. That once he saves us, that that's not the end of it. It's more than just going to heaven. It's, it's, it's about life itself. And he said, I came that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Now notice there is no if attached to that. He did not say, I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly if you've got good health. Because if that were the case, many would be disqualified. He did not say, I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly if you've got money in your pocket. Because again, many would be disqualified. He did not say, I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly if the children that you've raised and tried to do right by and prayed with and guided in the right direction, uh, if they're doing right. Because again, some would be disqualified. There is no if attached to it. He said, I came that you might have life and that you might have it, have it more abundantly, period. Mm -hmm. In spite of your health, in spite of what money you may or may not have, in spite, in spite of all the other things, he's saying, I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly, period. Yeah, that's a good point. I think of Fanny Crosby, who was blind from the time she was two till she was in her 90s and, and, and wrote thousands of hymns. And one of my favorite is, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. Listen to this. Oh, what a foretaste yeah. of glory divine. She knew abundant life in spite of. Not because she had sight, but because uh, something was working in her soul and and so the lord said i came that that you might have life and have it more abundantly and i, I i'm glad i'm saved but but i want this i want this more that jesus has to offer i want the more i, I feel sort of like a elisha did when he was following elijah you remember the story elijah is walking along and elisha is following with him and he's he he realizes how God has had his hand on Elijah and he realizes the power that, that God's given him. And, and, and so they're walking along and Elijah said, said, stay here. And they said, no, I'm going on with you. And so they went on another distance and, and Elijah said, stay here. And he said, no, I'm, I'm going on with you. And so they went on a, another distance and, and Elijah said, stay here. And he said, no, I'm Going on with you. And in essence, Elisha said, or Elijah said to him, What do you want? <laughs> he said, Want well, a double portion of what you've got. Amen. I realize my inabilities, I realize my limitations, and, and I want what you've got, but I want a double portion of it. And he said to them, and you know the story, you, you stay with me, and when you see me taken up in the chariot, uh, and anyway, so he, there he is, and they've crossed the Jordan, and, and the chariot comes and, 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 and sweeps him up into the air, and, and he watches as Elijah goes up into the, into the air, and the mantle falls, and Elisha walks over, picks it up, walks to the Jordan River and says, where is the God of Elijah? And he smites the river, and it parts. And he went on to do twice as many miracles as Elijah. Mm -hmm. Well, I know the feeling that Elisha had. There's been times that I've traveled since I've been saved, traveled some distance, and, and, and the devil would say, stay here. But I wanted more. 
And so I'd travel a little further and, 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 I, and situations would say, stay here. But I wanted more. And so I'd travel further. The sad situation is the pews are filled with people all over our country who have grown some, but they stay here. And they may even grow a little more when revival comes back. But when they stay there. And God wants us to go further and, and keep moving in the right direction. And, 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 and so he's saying to us, I came that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. I'm, I'm speaking for myself. Listen, I want more. I've said this all over the country, and I hope you'll bear with me as I say it. We talk about revival. We sing about revival. We pray for revival. But I'm telling you, I don't need revival. Please hear me out. If a business fails and you revive it, that means it lost ground and you brought it back. If a person faints and you revive them, They've lost ground, you bring them back. In my almost 58 years of serving the Lord, I've not lost ground. I cannot look back over my shoulder at any year or any point in my life and say I loved him more then than I do right now. Amen. I love the scriptures back then more. They excited me more then than they do now. There's not a time. The songwriter put it in a way that I would, I would echo what he says. He said, if ever I love thee, my Jesus tis now. I don't need revival. But having said that, I want more. I want to be more surrendered to him. I want to be a greater soul winner. I want to be, I want to be a greater prayer. I want to be, I want to be more like the Lord Jesus Christ. And I, I want to, I'm not sad, listen, I'm content with my salvation. I'm content with the fact that he's birthed me into his family. I'm content that he answers my prayers, but 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 I want more. I want to keep moving forward. I haven't reached the pinnacle. Yes. I've not got to the highest mountain. I don't think I've used up the supply that he wants to give me. I think there's more there is. to be had. There is. And I say, dear God, I want more. I, I want more from me. I want more from my children. I've I'm grateful that none of my kids are on drugs. I'm grateful that none of them have gotten into alcohol. I'm grateful that they serve the Lord and love the Lord. And, and, uh, but, but, and, I, and I want every one of them to be saved. I want every one of them to be born again. One of my granddaughters, she, she was to be turning 11 the next week. A couple, three weeks ago, she called me on a Thursday night. She said, Papa, I got something to tell you. I said, tell me, baby. She said, I asked Jesus Christ to save me yes. and become my Savior. Amen. And the back story to that was the mother had been telling them about the Christmas story. How he came and suffered and died for us. And, and my little granddaughter kept saying, Mama, that's horrible that he, had to, that he had to go through all of that, that he suffered that, that they treated him that way. Mama, that was horrible. And, 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 and my little daughter said, well, honey, he did that for you. Mm. He did that for me. And so on a Thursday night, my granddaughter slipped into her room and got on her knees and said, if you did that for me, I want you to be my savior. Yeah, Amen. <laughs> yeah. nothing like it. I want them to be saved. Mm -hmm. At the end of June, I'll be baptizing another one that's 11. She's gotten saved and she wants me to baptize her. And, and so I'm pleased that, that, that the children 
have been saved. I'm, I'm pleased that the grandchildren are becoming Christians. And, but but, 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 but I, I, I don't want one of them to go to hell. Not one of them. But I'm telling you, I don't want just to be satisfied with the fact that they're saved. I want them to become servants. I want them to become whatever God wants them to be. Teachers, deacons. Preachers, wives, whatever. I want them to become surrendered to Him and 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 easy to lead by the Holy Spirit of God. And and I, I, again, thank God they're saved. I I praise the Lord that they're saved and on the way to heaven. But I I'm not satisfied. I want more than that. I want them to become servants. I love my church. I'm a part of a church. It's a a good church, got a good pastor. We don't have a lot of that silly, junky stuff that's going on in so many. I, I think of not Jesse DePlantis. Jesse DePlantis said, I went into my office and there Jesus was. And I said, well, hello, Jesus. And he said, hello, Jesse. He said, we're on first name basis. He said, we talked a few minutes, and I looked at Jesus and said, Jesus, you look like you're bothered about something. Has somebody hurt your feelings? Has somebody said something that's made you sad? He said, I'll tell you what, Lord, I've, I've, I've got a lot of appointments, but I'm going to cancel them, and I'm going to stay here and try to comfort you a little bit. I thought, how arrogant. And how stupid. Yeah. Yeah. I mean just plain stupid. The Lord doesn't need me to comfort him. I'm not in that position. I don't have that ability. But, but, but my church doesn't do all that kind of stuff. We're, we're sound doctrinally. We've got good music. We don't have all that... Uh, None of that goes on in our church. The people are friendly. There's not any fighting and fussing. And, and, uh, and the people love each other. We just, this is a good church. But I want it to be more than just a good church. I want it to be more than just where people come together and enjoy each other. I want it to be, I want it to be a hospital. Where the broken and the bruised and the, and the battered people uh, can think, if I could just get there, if I could just make it across that threshold, there's people inside of that church that can help heal me. I want it to be a hospital. I want it to be an oasis to where missionaries who have made phone call after phone call after phone call and told I can't use you right now and they're so discouraged and, and they've traveled across this dry desert and, and they're so thirsty and, and when they come to our church I want it to be a, uh, that they walk into where there's shade trees and, and where there's a cool breeze and, and, and there's, a, there's a good cool drink of water. I want it to be an oasis to where they walk away from there refreshed. I want it to be more than just a little group of people who meet and hear the preaching and the singing and go home. I want it to be a soul winning station. I want it to be where every member, the deacons, the children, have a passion for lost people and leave that building to find somebody that needs Christ. I'm talking about the children. I may have told you this story. One of my granddaughters, she was 11 at this time of this story. She was, she's now a school teacher, but, but uh, she was 11 years of age and she called me one day and she said, Papa, uh, I led one of my schoolmates to Christ. <laughs> and I said, baby, that's wonderful. I said, tell me what happened. She said, well, three days ago, said she came in and said, Samantha, <coughs> why don't you do this and this and this and this? And she said, I told her because I'm a Christian. So she came back the next day and she said, Samantha, what is a Christian? 
And she said, I told her what a Christian was. And said, Papa, she came in today and said, would you show me how to become a Christian? <laughs> At 11 years of age. Jesus said, I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Not just hang in there. Brother Larry Spencer knows my pastor, Brother Lynn McLean. He has some of the funniest sayings. And, and he'll say something like, uh, hang in there like a hair in a biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Lord don't want us just to cope. He don't want us just to hang in there. He wants us to have abundant life. And I say, God, I'm available if that's what you want. One of my favorite songs is, I'm pressing on the upward way. <coughs> New heights I'm gaining every day. Praying as I onward bound, Lord, lead me on to higher ground. I want to go to higher ground ground. Amen. I want to scale above the heights. I, 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 want, I want everything that God wants me to have. And, and the Lord says, I came that you might have that. Can you say amen to that? Yes. Thank you for your time. Amen.